But what we found is that basically um, having cytology, using cytology and fish together about doubles the sensitivity over cytology alone. So we really do get a significant Im improvement in ability to, to diagnose cancer. And we think a key part of this is that, again, we have cancer cells, a few cancer cells generally in these brushings floating in a sea of normal cells. And doing the fish test allows us to, in a sense, the, the technician or pathologist as they are scanning the slides are uh, able to more easily pick out the abnormal ones when otherwise in cytology they are trying to use differences in the shape or the size of the cells to determine if they are abnormal. Here they have something that's very fairly easy in that you know if you have three dots instead of two dots that are fluorescent you know and have bright you know bright dots and under the microscope it's just easier to tell that that's, a, that's an abnormal cell. The earlier we can diagnose patients, the better types of treatment we can offer them, and the li more likely it is that they will have long-term survival after treatment. So this has proven to be ex ex extremely helpful for us in managing patients that we suspect have bowed up cancer. And it actually dovetails very well with the fact that here at Mayo, we're one of the few centers in the country that has a protocol of liver transplantation for bowel duct cancer. And we've developed this protocol so that if we can find um, bowel duct cancers early and they meet certain criteria, what we found is that those patients do extremely well if they can have a liver transplant. And so for a, a cancer that is really very difficult to treat, that gives you know, unique hope for those patients that we might be able to achieve long-term survival. And so having this FISH test in conjunction with cytology has proven to be a significant advance along that path. Elder cancer is a relatively uncommon cancer. We estimate that there are probably only somewhere between five and 6,000 cases a year in the United States. That's compared to pancreatic cancer where it's probably more like 20,000 cases a year. Um, and the thing, though, is that it appears that the incidence of bowel duct cancer is gradually rising in most industrialized countries. We are not sure why, but that seems to be a trend that's been documented here in the United States, in Europe, and in Australia as well. So it may be a cancer that's becoming more important over time.